AMD and NVIDIA have been trading blows for what seems like an eternity. The two largest surviving GPU manufacturers are locked in heated battle with one another since about 1993 when NVIDIA entered the game. And they continue to innovate in the world of graphics technologies even to this day. The release of the Fury is no exception to this fierce competition. The name itself is homage to the dual GPU powerhouse that was realized under ATI back in 1999, one that allowed them to pull ahead of the competition against 3DFX, Matrox, S3, and of course NVIDIA. And the new Fury is not iconic because it's the Halo product, but because it's the more affordable and more obtainable VG-based board. It's more available, it brings the innovative high bandwidth memory to the masses, and is nearly 90% the performance of the big brother, the R9 Fury X. Specifically, the Sapphire Tri-X Radeon R9 Fury variant brings a much improved Tri-X cooler into the mix, with better 90mm aerofoil fans and a much more substantial heatsink than previous generations with seven heat pipes. The color scheme is also a bit more subdued, letting it fit into a wider variety of setups. And of course, that gigantic cooler is not without its merits either, because it's able to cool the Fury to a chilly 74 degrees under even the harshest of load conditions with nary a peep. It's practically whisper quiet as far as air coolers go, and you're likely to hear the rest of your PC rather than the Tri-X Fury itself, because that cooler doesn't make any sound. But the question on all of our minds is, can it perform? Is it better than the competition? Can it beat out the 980 or the 980 Ti? Of course it can. And it even provides an appreciable performance boost over the 290X, of course, and it generally performs better than the similarly priced GTX 980, even achieving parity with the 980 Ti in certain 4K situations. And it seems that the RAM, the limited RAM, 4 gigabytes, does not appear to be an issue. Even if high bandwidth memory isn't necessarily playing a substantial part at the moment, it doesn't appear to be a limitation. Unfortunately, the power consumption might be of concern because it's slightly on par with what the 980 Ti is able to consume, and the Titan X, while performing just slightly worse than those. It's not a complete loss, however, because it's still a very efficient card nonetheless, considering the performance that you can actually achieve with it. It does consume a few more watts, but it could very well be worth it, depending on your budget and what you are looking for in a card. In other words, it's not horrible. But do you want to know what the best part about the Fury is? It's a cut-down Fiji. So it might even be possible to restore those lost compute units using a handy tool to see if they're unlockable, and then flashing the BIOS to get all of those working. It's not a guarantee, but it might even be possible. So therefore, you have a full Fury X for the price of a Fury. Of course, the dual BIOS capability comes in handy here because you can flash one, and if it doesn't work, if those compute units are failed units, you can just go to the other BIOS. So then, is the Fury worth the 549 price of entry? and perhaps the 569 price of entry for the Tri-X Fury OC edition? Most certainly. It's very capable at 4K, and it's almost as fast as the 980 Ti, especially with 4K, and even with memory-intensive effects turned all the way up. It's a very impressive little card, or shall I say gigantic card, considering what you're getting. No, it's definitely not the most extreme 4K experience you can have, but considering the amount of money that you'll be spending for it, it's actually quite good. It's fast, relatively power efficient, it's quiet as all get out, and quite frankly, it's a good card. AMD has made a great show in here, and the Fury seems to be just the beginning. HBM is just the beginning, and we're about to see HBM2 coming up in the future. But of course, it does remain to be seen what the true effect of high bandwidth memory is on the industry, however. Because again, we're only just beginning to see the profusion of high bandwidth memory. I'm Jeff for WCCF Tech Reviews.